we really set the scene with this kind of horrific storm. The first character you're kind of introduced to is Prospero, and we've equated that with the Cape Fear theme by Bernard Herrmann. As we work through the show, we get to a section that we're calling Ariel, which is another piece written by Gordon Goodwin. It's a lot lighter than the first part of our show. It focuses on the sprite that is Ariel. And one of my favorite parts about the Ariel section of the show is the way that the music is coordinated through the sabers with the streamers on the end. It's a great visual audio moment. As we work into the section that we're calling Caliban, it's an amazing combination of hip hop dancing, uh, great electronic music, live performance with some incredible battery writing, and then we utilize the trombones in another fashion versus what we did with it in the opener. After the hip hop section of Caliban, we move right into a complete 180 with a Baroque section from the brass section that drives all the way to a very exciting ending. One of my favorite parts of the ballad this year is an amazing pit moment composed by Jim Wunderlich that is staged with this incredible guard dance in the center of the field. That works its way into a beautiful build by the brass section and then to a moment that's kind of become very trademark of the Blue Devils in the last couple years, which is a very emotional and communicating ballad with an incredible impact at the end. Dave Glide did a great job of taking a lot of the different themes throughout the show, introducing a couple of new ones, and just giving you everything that you want, and it's very relentless all the way to the ending. And I think it really ties the whole show together well. When Dave Glide and Scott Chandler first mentioned to me that they wanted to include trombones in this year's show, I was very excited. Just as a brass player, to introduce another color and timbre into a brass section is very exciting for me. One thing we wanted to do with the trombones was not just treat them as a specialty instrument. We wanted to feature them as trombones. What can a trombone do that euphoniums and baritones can't? And we wanted to focus on those abilities of the instrument throughout the entire show. We also wanted the members to march, just as they would on the field with the euphonium with the trombone. Not stage them in one stationary area, but we wanted to move them around the field like we typically would with the drum corps. Introducing the trombones to a drum corps was very unique from a membership standpoint. The performers are mainly baritone and euphonium players, so it was an educational experience for them because a lot of them haven't played trombone before. So not only were we introducing this instrument to the field and as part of the Blue Devils, but a lot of our performers had to learn how to play the trombone for this summer. Also, putting some of the brass book together with Dave Glide, we wanted to make sure that we were utilizing the trombone correctly. So we actually went and got one of the core's trombones, and I'm a trumpet player, but I went ahead and sat there in my office as we were putting some of the show together and played the trombone to make sure that we were using it in the best way that we possibly could. This year's brass section is, I think, the definition of where we've wanted to go for many years. The personalities, the abilities, the, the great mix of musical and visual abilities. We can almost ask them to do anything and they respond right away. It's really given us the creative abilities to throw anything at them and really see what's possible on a football field. I think one of the things that's very unique to this year's brass section is that they have an innate desire to be great. Uh, I'm seeing things with them that I haven't really seen in the past several years. They, they show up with kind of a chip on their shoulder that they want to prove to us that what they did yesterday isn't quite good enough for today. And it's really allowing us to move forward and every day give them new information, which as a teacher is exactly what you want to do. You don't want to rehash the information that you gave out yesterday you want to start to really give new information, and that makes the summer a lot more fun. This year's brass section is allowing us to do that by taking the information that's given to them, applying it, and allowing us to be better teachers, which is in turn making them the best performers possible. There's times when I'm in the circle and I really feel a pushback from the members challenging me to be a better teacher, challenging me not to make a mistake. And when you've reached that point, when you feel that they're pushing you beyond what you're capable of, and you've done this for longer than they've been alive, it's a pretty incredible experience. 